Hi, I'm Craig Phillips. Welcome to my tiling trade tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install cement boards onto wooden floorboards in preparation for installing floor tiles. And the tools and products you're going to require are cement boards, a large drill and a mixing paddle for mixing the adhesive, cordless screwdriver and screws for fixing the boards down, some junting tape, scoring tool, rubber mallet, a tape measure and pencil, a straight edge and a spirit level, flexible tile adhesive, a mixing bucket, a serrated edge trowel and some PPE. We're going to start by preparing the wooden floorboards first. Give them a brush off and remove any loose debris. If you find any loose floorboards, make sure you screw these down tight into the joist below. Now I'm going to take a pencil and a spirit level and draw lines across the floorboards where my beams are below. This will help me for when I'm screwing the boards down. Now the cement board I'm going to be using are 1200 millimeters in length, 800 millimeters wide and 12 millimeters thick. They can be used indoors and outdoors for multiple different surfaces. Perfect for wooden floors like this. Now I'm going to be laying these down on a wet bed of flexible tile adhesive, but first off, I'm going to lay them on the floor dry so I can distinguish where all my cuts are before I do my mix. Now cutting the boards is quite simple. You need a straight edge and a scoring tool, or if you have an old trimming knife or even a handsaw, however the handsaw will create quite a lot of dust. So I'm going to cut this directly in half for my brickwork effect. Go from 600 to 600 this end. Place the straight edge on the marks. Get my dust mask on. And score them. Start off gently and then go a little bit deeper and harder. Place a block underneath one end. And hopefully it should snap. That's our two halves. Now, not everybody chooses to do a dry run like this. I prefer it for a number of reasons. One is you can take your time and get all your cuts perfect. And it stops you mixing up too much rapid set adhesive, which of course goes off quite quickly and you don't want to waste it. And then when you get to the final cut, this is where it gets a little bit more slower. You may have to scribe around the door frames and architraves. These are quite tricky to cut out, but if you've got the correct tools to do it, it should make it a little bit easier. A quick check to see if this fits in place, as you may need to nibble a little bit more off the edges. If not, continue on with the next cuts. Marking them down to size. Scoring them well with the scoring tool. Snapping them and then placing the cut piece up against the edge of the door. Again, to see if you have to shape around the architrave. Saw down the two edges, score it, and snap it with a pair of pliers. And then offer it into position to see if it fits. Now I've completed the dry lay, and all the cuts are done. I can hoover up the dust and number the pieces and take it back up, ready to mix my adhesive. So now I'm ready to mix my rapid set flexible adhesive. I start off by putting water into the mixing bucket, a little bit more, and then load the powder in and mix it. Apply the powder slowly and start to mix a small amount at a time. 
I'm using a large power drill with a mixing paddle on there. Always mix up just enough that you're comfortable with laying out before it dries. For the first board, quick double check to see what the level is looking like. It's pretty much, give or take a millimetre or two, level. So I'm just going to put a mark of about just over 1200 mil because the tiles, uh, sorry, the panel's 1200 mil. So I'll put my adhesive up to about there. And 800 mil from here is about there. And that way you're not spreading too much adhesive at once. And I'm using my notch trowel. I'm going to use the back end first, spread it flat across the area that I intend on covering. Right up to my mark. And once you've spread it across that area, you then turn your trowel to the side when it's notched out and spread it like this. Now by combing that adhesive out across that area, you're spreading it more evenly. You're also reducing the risk of getting air bubbles and pockets in there. So once I put my board on there, gently tap it down with my rubber mallet, it's gonna spread that out nice and flat, nice and even, and fill any of the voids or gaps below the board. Okay, I'm just gonna lower this down as low as I can. And then before I put any pressure on there, slide it into the position that I want it. I'm leaving about a five or 10 millimeters gap around the edge there, and I'm just trying to square it up with my corner the best I can. Once I'm happy with that, one double check. It's looking almost perfect on there. But if it isn't, this is the time now you can start to just shape that a little bit and try and get it as level as possible. I'm gonna get my rubber mallet and just gently tap the board evenly across all edges the middle and the sides, putting a little bit of pressure on it at the same time. And what you'll notice is there is some writing on the board which states this side up. So of course we want to be able to see the writing on there. The underside of the board is a little bit more rougher and it's going to key to the bottom. Now my next stage is now to screw this down. Now, we've got floorboards on here. Our screws, I'm gonna use 50 millimeter screws. We wanna screw right through the cement board, right the way through the floorboard, and we wanna bite into the actual joists below. These are the marker pens I did earlier. So across this board here, we're gonna be able to get three fixings in there, and I'll do that four times across the board. The 12 mil thickness gives you the highest flexual strength and up to three times the compressive strength of other cement boards. Their unique formula provides outstanding mold and moisture resistance, giving you the best protection against moisture damage. I'm placing three millimeter plastic spaces between all edges of the boards. These will be removed and the gaps will be filled later. If these are to be fitted in a wet room, the boards are going to need to be covered with a suitable waterproof tanking system. The cement boards don't swell, rot or warp, so your tiling work stays put whenever a superior performance is required. Now something to remember whenever you're building the floor up like we're doing here with cement boards and then tiles, always check that the bottom of the door is enough clearance to open and close it because once you build that up, it might exceed the bottom of here and you will not be able to get the door open and of course, it needs to be completely open to be able to unscrew it off the hinges and plane some off the bottom. So that's my 15 cement boards all bedded down and firmly screwed right through the floorboards 
into the joists. My next stage now is to remove all the packers, give it a sweep off. Then you can mop the dust up across the joints using a damp mop or a cloth. And then mix a little bit more of my rapid set adhesive and fill in the joints and cover them up with a reinforced tape. Now filling and reinforcing these joints is quite easy because they're anything from three to five millimeters thick. So initially, I just put the adhesive on like this, get the edge of my trowel and fill in the gap. It doesn't really matter what it looks like at this point. But once you've gone over it like that, then you get your tape. It's a little bit like a plasterer's scrim tape, but a little bit stronger because it's for the floor. You put it across the joint here, straddling it 50% and then just get a little bit more of your adhesive over the top and just glide it across like this. Trying to make it as flat as possible, but of course enough adhesive on there to hold it and set it into position. I tend to do the full length first of the joints between the boards, let that go off for five or 10 minutes, and then I do the width in here and here. I've drawn a little sketch here and these thick black lines are our floor joists below the floorboards. Now these should be spaced out at about 400 centers, but it's not always the case in some older houses. It should be in new houses, of course. And our boards, as we know, are 1200 millimeters long by 800 millimeters wide. So the aim is, of course, to get each one of them joints finishing on the actual beam. So you're screwing them down and there is no movement in the board itself, but it's not always possible. So there's one little thing you can bear in mind. Obviously we stagger our joints like a brickwork effect the way we've done them here. But if our boards are overhanging where these joists are here and here, the two options you've got is you can cut the boards down and actually let each one sit on the joist itself and screw them down. However, if you sail them over like this diagram is here, of course you've got your adhesive underneath them and you've screwed them down in all of the beams either side. Then put some extra screws in here, here, here and here. And again on the other board. Just about four across the length on each one of them. And that way that will hold that down well. Of course your next board below it, that will be straddling across this joint here and will be fixed into this beam and this beam, here and here, here and here, and the same again there. So that will help tie that one in. If you plan on changing the location of any of your bathroom suite, do make sure that you get the first fix of plumbing altered before you start to fix down any boards on the floor or the walls. So that's how you install cement boards to a wooden floor in preparation for tiling. If you're looking for more how-to videos or inspiration, follow us on all social media handles and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. But if you just want to know more about the products I've been using, check out the website, tilemountain.co.uk.